In this video, we are going to discuss about symmetric property of the DFT. First, we discuss the circular symmetries of a sequence. Then, we will see the symmetry property of the DFT. We know that endpoint DFT of a finite duration sequence is similar to the endpoint DFT of a periodic sequence. Here, periodic sequence is given by XP of N of period N. So, xp of n is equal to summation n m equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n minus m into capital N. If we shift this periodic sequence by k units, we will get another periodic sequence. That is xp dash of n which is equal to xp of n shifted by k units. That is represented by summation m equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n minus k minus m into capital N. Here the periodic sequence is given which is repeated. The same sequence is represented in a circular form. This x of 0, x of 1, x of 2 and x of 3 value which is represented in anti-clockwise direction. It's also a periodic sequence which is shifted by 2 units when compared with the previous figure. Here this is x of 0, this x of 1, the values are shifted. The finite duration sequence is given by x dash of n which is equal to the periodic sequence for the period of 0 to n. 0 for the other durations. Generally the circular shift can be represented as the index modulo n x dash of n is equal to x of n shifted by k modulo n which is also written as x dash of n which is equal to x of n minus k modulo n. The endpoint sequence x of n is circularly even if it is symmetric about the point 0 on the circle that is if it is symmetric about x of 0 then x of capital N minus n will be equal to x of n. The endpoint sequence x of n a circularly odd if it is anti-symmetric about the about x of 0. In that case x of capital N minus n is equal to minus x of n. Time reversal of an endpoint sequence we can obtain by reversing the samples about the point 0 on the circles. That can be given by x of minus n modulo n which is equal to x of capital N minus n. Time reversal is equivalent to plotting x of n in the clockwise direction on the circle. Till now we have learned about circular symmetries of a sequence. Now we will learn about symmetric properties of DFT. Assume the endpoint sequence x of n and its DFT x of k are both complex valued. Then the sequence can be represented as x of n is equal to xr of n plus j into xa of n. This real part, this is imaginary part. Similarly, its DFT is given by x of k is equal to xr of k plus j into xa of k. This real part and this is imaginary part. For the sequence x of n, the DFT is given by x of k which is equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e power minus j 2 pi k n by n. The DFT is given by summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 in the place of x of n, we are including real part and imaginary part. e power minus j 2 pi k n by n is represented as cos theta minus j sin theta. So cos 2 pi k n by n minus j sin 2 pi k n by n. Multiplying these terms, so the first term is xr of n into cos 2 pi k n by n. Second term is j into xi of n cos 2 pi k n by n. This term is xr of n minus j sin 2 pi k n by n. The next term is minus of j into j. That is j square. j square is minus 1. Minus 1 into minus becomes plus into xi of n sin 2 pi k n by n. Now we are going to separate the real part and imaginary parts. So the real part is equal to this cos term and this sine term. And the imaginary part, we will get the next sign term and the cos term. Similarly, we can find the inverse DFT. We know the inverse DFT is given by x of n, which is equal to 1 by n 
in the summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into e power j 2 pi k n by n instead of uh, e power minus j we will get e power j 2 pi k n by n so in that case we will get cos theta plus j sin theta so similarly if you are separating the real part and imaginary part we will get xr of n and xi of n for real and even sequences if x of n is a real and even sequence in that case x of n is equal to x of capital N minus n x of n is real and even x i of k is equal to 0 in that case the dft is equal to x of k will get only this sin sequence similarly idft also reduces to this term so we will get only the cosine sequence we suppose x of n is real and odd sequences then x of n is equal to minus x of n minus n x r of k the real part of dft is changed to 0 in that case the dft reduces to this sine term idft also reduces to sine term if the sequence is purely imaginary sequence in that case x of n is equal to j into x i of n and in that case x r of k will be equal to x i of n into sin 2 pi k n by n x i of k is equal to x i of n into cos 2 pi k n by n here this x r of k is odd and x i of k is even if x i of n is odd then its dft x i of k is equal to 0 and hence x of k is purely real. If x i of n is even, then x r of k is equal to 0. So, the dft x of k is purely imaginary. These are the symmetric properties of dft. For efficient computation of dft, these symmetric properties are used. Thank you for watching this video.